and then they went on as they as they found out that 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 it was pain somehow to go from place to place and try to make all the good out of their trade and music. Well, they went then, as I said, from from here to there and everywhere, and that was how it was. There were people then that wouldn't now they wouldn't get connected in with. Or that with every Tom, Dick and Harry, they wouldn't get connected in with people who were, weren't tradesmen or weren't musicians. And all the things that they ever played, all the reels and jigs and hornpipes and old Irish years that they played, I have them all. I have every one of them. Oh dear, dear, I think I should go and rest the feet for a while. Ah oh dear. Ah, there you go, bro. I will surely. Ah. I remember, oh, I remember all our whole family coming down this road here, leaving the parish of Kilcar and, and heading for Glen Colum Kill. At that time, country dancing was a, a very common thing. And of course, our people were the people who played for the country dancing at that time. Well, I remember the two, the the the, man, the manx and the asses and carts coming down this road here, all all of us heading for Glen Colum Kill. And I remember they played the fiddle coming down the road here that day. Two of them played first and second fiddle. And when that uh, when that um, when that part of the music was over. Hugh Gulliher took the pipes and he played. He played a march here coming down, marching down straight for Carrick. He played. He played the drunken piper. And you know it was just very nice to see the. You know at that time the seas all coming along. You see, and the bagpipes hung on the on the on the Manx cart in front, and the two fiddles. And uh, then when we would come here to Teelan and Glen Colum Kill, oh, that would be a continual holiday. <coughs> that would be until we would leave again. But, uh, ah, that, that was a jolly time. A jolly time, sure. It was all, I remember too, you know, the roads, there were no good roads then, like what is now. Nothing but big boulders of stones lying on the roads, and you had to try to find your way along the, along the road just as well as you could, you know, and that sort of way. And uh, then we would go into Glen Coram Kill, then from Teelan, <coughs> and we would spend in there for about a month, dancing, Dancing and the tradesmen working, supplying the shops with their with their stuff, and making all sorts of sorts of utensils for for the country women and houses. No, well I remember all that now. Um, that that now all that whole picture has has passed away into a, some kind of a new world. They were always well dressed, and you could bring them anywhere. Or, or they could, you could. In fact, they did get beds to sleep in in any house that they ever went to. They were given a room if there was a spare room at all in the house. They were given a room with a couple of beds, and they slept. They slept there and and um, stayed there as long as they as they wished. They carried, as a rule, they carried all their own equipment. They carried their own bed clothes and um, all their, their equipment that they used for their trade. And um, they, they were very nice people indeed. And they were always liked and very welcomed. And as well as that, being a traveling people in those days, uh, there was hardly any contact with the outside world. We had all things in question, what had been seen and what had been heard and all the rest of it. Um, then we would tell about some of our adventures and our traveling life, and so on. So that was how, that's how we did. That was very interesting to the people, and would you believe it, that since we stopped, now since we stopped visiting the places that we used to visit, would you believe it that the people got lonely? They got lonely about it. They would like to see us once more again coming.